what is going on my trophy hunting athletes welcome back to another episode or i should say another trophy talk another week of the trophy talk we're going to be going over the week of august 8th 2021 and i know it's been quite some time since i put one of these videos out i've been dealing with some stuff i've been changing some equipment been going through some things but I have been making some good progress in some games. So, I mean, I guess that's a plus. I, I don't want to, you know, I feel like I always give um, excuses for this. I, I am trying my best. Trust me. I am trying my best to keep a consistent schedule of uploading these videos. Also streaming. If you guys haven't followed me on Twitch, there's a link for that down in the description below. I'm trying to stream over there at least three times a week, being Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, and Sunday possibly sometimes so three to four times a week I'm trying to stream over there so uh, if you haven't followed me already go give me a follow down uh, d down over there there's again a link to that in the description below also before we get started let me know down in the comments below what games you guys have been playing if you've been making some progress and some stuff if you've been able to pick a ps5 up anything like that let me know that all down in the comments below I love to read from everybody but with all of that being said let's get into this trophy talk and let's talk about what games I've been making some progress in, which I have been making some pretty good progress. Um, I haven't made a, this video or a video, a trophy talk. I believe this is going to be my third week. Um, I've just been caught up in so much stuff, but I have been making, again, some good progress. And I'll be walking you through a few of the things and uh, some things if you're planning on going for some stuff. So starting off, I was able to platinum and 100% need for speed shift and... This was an experience. I, I still will stand by the physics of this game are trash, but I was able to finish the whole game up and do all the epic badges and everything. And all in all, it was a pretty easy platinum. I made it a little more difficult than I needed to make it. So uh, in my last trophy talk, I was talking about how I was, uh, well, I was more complaining about how getting all the stars in the career was kind of stupid and the physics were stupid and all that. Let me just say before, if you're going to go for this platinum and you do, uh, if you do some of the online badges, even if you don't do some of the online badges, um, there are other ways to get all of the badges in the game. I guess you have to do some of the online to, to make it easier. But one of the things that you don't have to do is you do not have to do all stars in all of the tiers. You, you don't have to worry about that. Don't sweat when you're playing through this and try to get it done. And... Yeah, that, that's basically what I wanted to get at when you're going for this Platinum. And, and the other thing that I want to talk about to make this game a little easier, because it's something that I messed up with as I was playing through, is you really only have to focus on a few things as you're playing through the career. You're going to be able to unlock all the tiers fairly easily, and you're going to have to win the Need for Speed Live World Championship for a trophy, so you're going to have to play through that whole championship in order to get the trophy. But other than that, all you have to do is reach level 50 and then do a bunch of badges. That's all the game requires you to do. So with that being said, you don't actually have to complete all of the campaign events or, or the, the, the story bait, whatever you want to say. You don't have to complete every single event in the game uh, because you can skip out on a few because there are only epic badges for things like beating all the rivals, beating all the series events. So you really don't have to do everything that the game has to offer. What I would do is, as you're playing through the career, really only focus on the rivals, because when you do the rivals, it requires you to get a podium position on every event that leads up to the rival to then be able to race the rival, and all of those podium events typically have series in them. So just focus on trying to beat the rivals, and then when you go from there, you can kind of, uh, you know, peel the layers back and figure out what you want to do. There's also a very easy way to cheese the clean race trophy, or I shouldn't say trophy, the clean race epic badge. There's three epic badges for basically racing clean on every single rate or every single track throughout the game. You can actually cheese this by doing a uh, race where you just race against one computer AI, and then you just set it to one lap. So you do one lap of the race, make sure it's a clean lap, and you can beat the AI and you can get yourself three easy epic badges there. When it comes to mastering the tracks, uh, I didn't focus on the European tracks because you do have to master the Nürburgring, which is a total of 37 turns. I was only able to master 36 of the 37 turns because I couldn't get that damn carousel. 
So since I couldn't get the carousel in the Nurburgring, I just disregarded all of the tracks when it came to uh, Europe. Uh, I was able to get them all done other than the uh, split Nurburgring tracks, but other than that, it's fairly easy. Um, and again, you'll be getting epic badges for other things like uh, clean overtakes, dirty overtakes, trading paint. Um, if you can worry about it from when you start playing the game, perfect launches, um, brand loyalties from uh, US, Europe, and Germ or not German, um, Japan. What am I saying? So there's three badges there. And then uh, a few of the onlines, if you were really want to focus on it. So this is what I would advise. If you're if you're wanting to play through this game, you can get it done pretty fast if you really want to, to worry about it. So these are the badges that I would advise going for. So you have Clean Race Europe, Clean Race Japan, Clean Race US. That's going to give you three epic badges right there. Then when it comes to the corner master, I would just disregard the Europe one. Now you can only, you could do the corner master if you're decent at racing games. I, I wouldn't say to go for this if you're not decent. The one thing that I will say about mastering corners and shift and shift two is that don't worry about the speed more as worrying about the line that you're taking. You do need to take it at speed, but you can take it a little bit slower and adjust yourself as you're going through the corner. So it's more about staying on the driving line than it is necessarily going through uh, the corner as fast as physically possible while staying on the track. It's more about the alignment than the speed. Because I have gone through some of these corners with a lot of speed in shift one and shift two, and you don't get the corner mastered because you didn't stay on the line. So you, staying on the line is more important than keeping your speed through the corners. So anyway, we have three epic badges right now. So you can do the Japan and the US one pretty easily. That gives you two more epic badges. So that gives you five. You're probably going to get trading paint. So that gives you six. Clean overtake is pretty easy. Seven dirty overtake is pretty easy. That's eight. Drafting is easy. That's nine. Now, perfect launch, I was not able to do because I didn't worry about it from the beginning of the game. So if you do worry about perfect launch from the beginning of the game, you'll be able to do that probably by the end but if not it is what it is so that's whatever difficulty i wouldn't worry about you can cheese it if you want to but i i wouldn't worry about it unless you desperately need epic badges so we're at nine right now iron man is easy so that gives you 10 so we're halfway through the epic badges that we needed endurance is easy you can do those just takes a little bit of time series is easy you can do those mixed track easy you'll do that rivals easy you'll do that we have 14 epic badges as of now i am counting on my hands and if i need my toes i'll bring them up i don't because we're only up to 20 so we're at 14 so the us japan and europe manufacturer loyalty is very easy that gives you 17 epic badges right there then if you are able to do the online you can then knock out the the europe champion Japan champion and the US champion along with the drift champion. That's 21 badges right there. So we're we've exceeded the 20. Now, if you're not able to do the online, you're a little bit you're in a little tricky situation because there are 27 badges in the game and I believe there's six online. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's six online badges out of the 27. So you basically have to do all of the single player badges if you want to. But with that being said, it's really not hard. Even if you don't go for the Europe Master Corner, you can easily do the perfect launches. You can just grind that out. The difficulty one, you can grind that out if you want to. And then the Star Collector is... Like, if I was to go for every badge in this game and I was to miss out on one badge, I would miss out on the Star Collector. Star Collector is going to drive you crazy, mainly because of the, the races that require you to spin cars out and the way that that works. The fact that that is a something that they want you to achieve in the game as you're playing through races, it blows my mind. <laughs> so I would just disregard Star Collector. So if you if you are playing this game when after the servers are shut down and you need twenty, I would go for the clean races that gives you six. I would go for the or that gives you three. What am I saying? So clean races gives you three. The the track master gives you six if you do all of them. Then Trading Paint will give you 7, Clean Overtake gives you 8, Dirty Overtake gives you 9, Drafting gives you 10, Perfect Launch gives you 11, Difficulty gives you 12, Iron Man gives you 13, Endurance gives you 14, Series gives you 15, Mixed Track gives you 16, Rivals 17, and then the three Loyalty Badges will give you 20. 
So you will have to grind out those perfect launches, which isn't the end of the world. You will have to master the Nurburgring, but that's better than getting all the stars and spinning cars out in the single player. And again, the difficulty-based trophy can kind of be cheese because you can do it in quick races and you can set your quick race to one opponent on one lap of a race and you can basically try to spin the opponent out uh, right when you start the race. So that can be a little easy. It's You're going to have to grind it out because I don't know how many races you have to do, but it's a decent amount of races in order to get that one to Epic. But th that's what you would deal with if you weren't going to do any of the online uh, when it comes to Epic badges. But I just wanted to... I mean, I guess this wasn't quick, but I quickly wanted to say uh, you don't have to focus on every single race as you're playing through the single player. You can just worry about the endurance events, just worry about the rivals, and just worry about the mixed events in the series. There's like four things you have to worry about, so everything that's kind of in between, you can kind of just let it be. If you want to do it, you can, but it is what it is. When it comes to leveling, I was level 50 by the time I beat the DLC. So that was me playing through the online. That was me playing through uh, some of the single player and then the online, and then I was level 50. So, you know, don't worry about the level 50. You'll, you'll get that easily over time. But Need for Speed Shift, done. Done and done, we can move on. Then up next, sorry. Then up next, we have Need for Speed The Run. Um, I don't know how long this took me from when I started. So I started on uh, July 27th, and I ended up getting it done on August 4th fourth so i think that was about a week a little over a week just because there was something that came up in this game that i was not uh planning on doing that's why it took me a little bit longer to uh to get done but basically what i needed to do in the run was i needed to finish up beating the story which i did in one night that took me like an hour or something or two yeah an hour wasn't long at all then the next thing i had to do is i had to beat the game on extreme difficulty now, you can actually cheese this because you can play through the last stage of the game on, on the easiest difficulty. And then when you get to the very last race of the last stage, you change your difficulty and then bang, bing, bang, bong. You just beat it on extreme that one race and you'll get the trophy. So a little bit of a cheese, but it works. <laughs> Still a pain in the ass. I mean, the worst part about the extreme difficulty isn't necessarily racing the AI because um, when it comes to the last race, as long as you make it to certain parts before the timer kind of like runs out, quote unquote, it's kind of an invisible timer, but before that timer, quote unquote, runs out, um, you can easily beat the race. Like, especially when it comes to right at the end of the race, there's a final turn where a cutscene um, happens and then you're literally thrown neck and neck with the guy. So you can be... At any point, you could be a mile ahead or a mile behind. As long as the timer says that you're good, like, you'll be good to go. Um, it just comes down to um, that last straightaway that you do, which, by the way, if you're not going to win the straightaway and you still have a rewind, make sure you just run right into the wall because it'll restart the race, and that's annoying. The other thing that's very annoying about the last race on the extreme difficulty is racing the damn train the train is the worst part of the last race not even the ai it's a damn train so the train you basically have to be perfect in the subway in order to get that to work so i i can't really give any advice or any like work around around the head you just have to basically be perfect not perfect but you have to be like 95 percent there um so yeah, I finished up the stages, I did the extreme difficulty, and then I started to blow through the challenge mode, which really only took me like two days to get through. It was really, really easy. I did get stuck on the East Coast Gold Challenge because there's something, there's a challenge in here called um, Live Free or Drive Hard, and it is by far the hardest event, the hardest thing in this whole game. If you don't have a cheat code, not an actual cheat code, but kind of a cheat code, there's a car that you get. It's the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento, and you get it when you reach driver level 30, and it has the best acceleration, the best top speed, the best hand. It's basically the best car in the game, and you get it when you reach, or one of the best cars in the game, you get it when you reach level 30. So what I did was, is I played through all these challenge series, and by the time I played through the challenge series, I was approximately level 25 i was a little bit below level 25 so i tried to do the i tried to do the live 
free or drive hard, whatever the hell it is. I tried to do that and I couldn't beat it. I tried it on the GTR. I tried it on basically every car that like I had in my garage that was like, it looked like it could handle because of the numbers. I tried it and, and none of them worked. So I then sat back for a second and said, what do I do? Um, so what I ended up doing was I leveled up to level 30. I, I reached level 30. And then when I reached level 30, I got the Sesto Elemento and I did the event in the Sesto Elemento. Now, when I did the event in not the Sesto Elemento in the best car that I could find or and or use i lost by um i lost the gold by around three seconds when i used the sesto elemento i beat it by i beat my my best time that i got by eight seconds so literally just changing the car like and i'm telling you i got the new car and then i tried the event and within two times of trying the event I had to try it twice because if you know anything about these challenges, they're bullshit because the cars spawn, the AI cars spawn in different locations. So sometimes they'll just pull out from the side streets and like, you know, take you out. It is what it is. It's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a um, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift vibe, right? Like you, you think it's random, but then it turns out that it's probably Jason Statham and he did it on purpose to kill me. Um, but regardless, um, unlike Han... I'm allowed to use a restart, so <laughs> I used a restart, and on my second try, I literally beat it by, I, I beat my best time by eight seconds, so um, if you're struggling with that East Coast Gold, with that live free or drive hard, whatever it's called, grind out to level 30, get the Sesto Elemento, and use the Sesto Elemento, and I'm, I guarantee you, you'll beat that event. If you want to, just get the Sesto Elemento for every event, it's basically a cheat code. You'll be able to beat it all with your eyes shut, it, it might drive itself. I'm not really sure. But um, what I wanted to get at was something that I wasn't planning on doing in the game was grinding to level 30. I thought by the time that I beat the run, I played through all the challenge series that I would get a sufficient amount of XP to get to level 30. That wasn't the case. <laughs> I only got to like, again, level 25-ish by the time that I beat the run and I did all the challenge series. So I did have to grind out level 30. And the way that I grinded it out was I played an event in industrial gold called industrial run i believe it was industrial run this event um sucks but basically what you do is you start the event up and you're going to drive very slow behind all of the ai and you're going to make like a right turn you'll be go through a straightaway under some bridges and then you'll make a left turn you'll go above a bridge and you need to stay behind all the cars while you're doing this then you'll make another right turn and right when you make that right turn, there should be a shortcut to the left. The second that you hit that shortcut, give it full throttle, hit the boost, and you want to pass all the cars. And the goal is that you're going to pass so many cars that you're going to get like a fast pass bonus. And it uh, it goes up by 100 every time it happens. So if you pass five cars in a row, you would get like 100 for passing one, 200 for passing two, 300 for passing three, 400 for passing four, and 500 for, for passing five. So it's kind of like... I don't want to say it's exponential, but like there is like a, there's a system to it. So you can pass on average seven to eight cars there. And then you basically have to win the race in order to have the XP count. So I was grinding that out. It took me uh, approximately like an hour per level. So it was an additional five hours to get from 25 to 30. I didn't see a big difference in XP between levels. There probably is somewhat of a difference, but the game doesn't have like it doesn't tell you how much XP you have out of out of what. So it's kind of hard to tell what you're earning and, and every well, you can tell what you're earning, but you don't know like your total. So um I would say roughly it was about an hour per level. So an, an additional five hours to grind that out, which took me it took me like a night or two to do that. Like that that's a decent amount of time for me. So um I grinded that out and then I went back, got the new car, beat the East Coast uh Express challenge series got that trophy and we got our platinum i'll be putting a platinum video out for this uh game very shortly but got need for speed the run done that's great so now i have three of the five games going down now i'm saying five because there are so it is need for speed undercover which i have done need for speed shift which i have done need for speed the run which i have done need for speed shift 2 which i don't have done but i'm working on and the fifth game going down, if you guys didn't know, is Need for Speed Carbon, which actually doesn't have trophies, which is a shame because it really should have trophies. But 
Um, yeah, there's five Need for Speed games going down on the PS3, but some for some reason, Hot Pursuit is still up, along with Most Wanted 2012. So not sure what's going on there, but you know, it, it, I'm gonna let it do its thing. So we got the run done. Um, that's that's nice, and we'll get into the next one, you know, in a second. But um, in the meantime, I did start up maximum pain three which has been kind of fun to play through uh we boosted this game for two nights probably for a total of uh three or four hours the first night that we played we we were really just kind of figuring out what was going on and then the second night we knocked some more stuff out so when it comes to uh trophies which i'm hoping to make a, a, a multiplayer guide for this at some point when it comes to trophies you're going to worry about for multiplayer anything from full monty down you should worry about <laughs> So full Monty down is is everything that you need to worry about. So we were worrying about uh, some stuff in the DLC. We were mainly trying to get this Trophy Express checkout, which uh, was giving us some problems, but I think we have it uh, fixed. Um, but we were working on that, and then we were getting to level four so we could make a class so we could use the M4 so we could level that up. So we're just in the process of leveling up the M4 and then uh, doing some random things, which shouldn't be too hard. And then uh, figuring out some stuff. What we were doing the other night, which took a little bit of time, it was the main thing we were working on was we uh, we did um, we did a wager. We won a flawless team gang wars, and we were working on a few of the gang wars modes for the full Monty trophy. And then on top of that, we were uh, before we did that, we were working on the trophy long arm of the law, which is to win twenty vendettas in the fifty fifth battalion HQ, which just takes a little bit of time. And then other than that, we got, um, there was another trophy that we got. Oh, we got Ares as well, because uh, my idea was I wanted to start at DLC pack one and kind of work my way down. So, uh, you know, when we hop back on to do it again, that's going to kind of be my goal. And then level 50, I, I can do level 50 one of two ways. There's a single player way of doing it and there's a multiplayer way of doing it. I think I'm going to do some, um, both ways, some multiplayer, some single player, just to grind it out by myself, but also grind it out with people, uh, if they want to. So that's coming along. And then unlocking all of the weapons, uh, is automatic. You just have to get that by level or by rank 40, you'll get all the weapons and then rank 50 is a trophy and then full Monty. But, uh, yeah, I'm working through this, going to have this multiplayer done hopefully in the next week. And then, um, We'll we'll move full time to that to knock out some of the uh, challenge mode stuff at the bottom before the servers go down. And then I'm not really worried about the single player when it comes to the single player. This is, you know, I, I'm I'm anticipating the single player to all be still obtainable after the servers go down. So um, I'm really just focusing on the multiplayer. I'm going to try to get the platinum before the servers go down. But if I don't end up getting like, uh, you know, like uh new york minute hardcore done before the servers go down i'm not going to be worried about it because i feel like it's still going to be good so uh but yeah i'm, I'm going to be working on that until i get it done basically and then last up we have need for speed shift 2 which i've been putting most of my time into and making some good progress so i started this back up on i got the king of the hill trophy on july 6th so a while ago like a month ago and then I started back up on the uh, on the everything else on the sixth as well. So ba basically a month a month between doing King of the Hill and starting everything else back up. So I started it up um, last Friday. So what I did when I started back up was I I did the Legends DLC, finished that up. I then did the Speed Hunters Edition DLC, did everything there, and now I'm working through the base game campaign. And while I'm working through the base campaign, base game campaign, that's a tongue twister. Holy smokes. While, <laughs> while I'm working through the base game campaign, I'm also worrying on mastering the tracks. I don't know how many tracks there are um, total throughout the game. Uh, I wish that, you know, these guides give you like, you know, the, the difficult trophies or the difficult races. But like, um, I, I don't know. I guess this is all the tracks. Yeah. Okay. So this is all the tracks. So... Um, you can see, so, so there's different, like there's different versions. So like, for instance, you have the brands hatch, you have brands hatch GP and brands hatch indie. So there's two versions of that. Then you have like, you get it. There's, there's different versions of it. And then you also have the yes for the night and, and all of that. So, um, all of these that say, yes, I will have to do. Um, and it is what it is. I wish that there was. You know, they give you a good breakdown, but they don't uh, give you necessarily, um, 
they don't necessarily give you a total number and I don't feel like counting because I don't have my graphing calculator out. So, uh, I'm not sure how many I have, but I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, uh, when I played through shift one, I basically mastered every course by the time I beat the campaign other than the Nurburgring. So I'm not too worried about, um, having these courses mastered as I'm playing through the game, because I'm already mastering them as I play through the game. And by the time I go back and clean them up, I'm going to have one, two, three corners max that I'm going to have to master. I'm probably going to have all the racing line stuff done. So it's just going to come down to doing a few corners, which I'm not too worried about. So again, I am working through the main story. I got level 20, which is the max level in the game. So the other things to come up are going to be uh, beating all the rivals, beating these two rivals here, then all the rivals, beating these people down here. Um, doing the, the career objectives, doing the badges, which you have to earn 100 badges. I believe I'm at 78 or something right now, and I'm about 50% through the campaign. So that's going to be, you know, quite easy to get through, and I will definitely have those. I'm anticipating, so I gave myself a month to do Shift 2 because that was my goal. I wanted to have Need for Speed to Run and Need for Speed Shift 1 done by um, the beginning of August, specifically August 1st. That didn't happen. I got a little bit set back because of the grind that I had to do in the run. So I ended up stopping or I ended up finishing the run on the fourth. I believe I did max pain three, like sometime around there. And then I started shift two up uh, the the Sunday after that, because I believe the fourth was a fourth was a oh, it was a Wednesday. OK, so I started on the sixth. So I probably started the I probably started shift two technically on the fourth or the fifth, um, but I didn't earn any trophies. But um, yeah, I'm giving myself like a month to do shift two. I, I really will anticipate it only taking me probably two weeks, three weeks max to get it done, which gives me, you know, a lot, a decent amount of time to do max pain three. Uh, I, I, the thing with shift two, so the difference between the run and shift two. So, so if we go and we look at the run, I don't even know if someone made a trophy guide for, the, for this. Yeah. So the run, the run states 50 hours out of six out of 10. I would say 50 hours is probably a little high. I would say probably more like 40-ish, but you do have to grind out that level 30, which is kind of a pain in the ass. So shift two is stating that it's at like, uh, I think it says, yeah, 55. So time-wise, they're comparable. The only difference is shift two, you have to master the corner. So it's more difficult, um, air quoting here. I think shift two will not take me long at all. I think what's going to take me the most time in shift two is going to be playing through the campaign. The only thing that I anticipate grinding out in shift two is going to be the 75 career events on hard difficulty, which I am going to end up grinding out on drift events because I don't want to put myself through the headache of doing those um, in just regular events throughout the game. So I'll probably be going to, to drift events, like really easy drift events, like one where you have to drift around a circle and I'll literally do that 75 times and I will get my trophy. <laughs> That's probably going to be the way that I'm going to end up doing it. I will probably drive myself crazy doing it, but it's, I think it's better to drive myself crazy by drifting around in a circle than driving myself crazy by taking, by making the campaign take five times longer than it needs to take. So that's just my mindset there. Um, but yeah, shift two is coming along. I, again, I anticipate two, three weeks max to get it done. I think two weeks is probably better, but you know, maybe three weeks, who knows, whatever. I'm going to have it done before the servers go down, but uh, that is what it is. If you guys have been staying up on the channel, I did put a multiplayer guide up for Need for Speed Shift the other day. I will be putting up a multiplayer guide for Shift 2 in the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. And then hopefully within the next week or so, I will be putting one up for Max Payne 3 as well. I want to, you know, obviously beat the game or beat the, the, the multiplayer. I probably won't fully level up, but I'll at least give a guide on... Uh, the best way to level up or the ways that I'm using to level up. But keep an eye out for all of those guides. If you're looking forward or you want to get into those, definitely keep an eye out. I would say that for my guides, when it comes to the multiplayer guides, I don't think that they're anything uh, revolutionary. They're giving, I, I'm regurgitating information that's kind of already known. I'm not really giving any insider details or, or better ways to do things more or less. Um, I will say that the one thing that I think I provide with my multiplayer guides, if you guys haven't checked any of them out, is I do link external Google Sheets that you can use to personally track stuff yourself. So when you want, if and when you want to do the King of the Hill trophy, when I make that Google Sheet accessible to the public, hopefully in the next few days, you can download it, 
you can fill it in and you can track it. I did the same thing for, with Need for Speed Shift. I made a Google sheet that will provide you tracking for beating, for getting things for badges, for doing the DLC trophy, multiplayer trophy. I, I provide Google Sheets for everything that if I'm using it, I, I provide it, I clean it up and I provide it for, for other people to use. So I would say that that's one thing. If you guys haven't checked any of my multiplayer guides out, um, that is one thing that I do provide to people other than just the, the means and methods to get through things. I will also provide any sort of Google Sheets for tracking or anything if it's not provided in the game. And even sometimes if it is provided in the game, I will also provide the Google Sheets uh, tracking just to make it easier for people because I think it is easier to have external tracking in uh, in games. So with all that being said, <laughs> that's what I've been playing this week. What do I plan on playing in the upcoming week or weeks? I'm going to be focusing exclusively on Need for Speed Shift 2 when it comes to single player. I'm going to be trying to finish up the Max Payne 3 multiplayer, getting that done and starting to grind out those levels. And then uh, I will be focusing on the Max Payne 3 single player exclusively after Shift 2. And then after Max Payne 3, I will be focusing exclusively, which I'm kind of excited to do because it's been a while, but I will be focusing exclusively on Grand Theft Auto 5 heists, uh, heists first and then single player after, which I'm not anticipating that taking too long. I've already beaten the campaign and everything. I just need to do some gold medal cleanups and then do some random things, some random trophies and stuff. But other than that, I don't anticipate that taking long at all and again i'm actually kind of excited to to play the game because it's been a while since i played a grand theft auto single player i think the last one i played was probably san andreas yeah the the last multiplayer that i played was or single player that i played for a grand theft auto game was san andreas i played through the trilogy and i had a lot of fun so uh i played gta 3 vice city and san andreas but that was back in 2016 i have not played a grand theft auto single player for five years so i'm actually kind of excited to go back and play the single player for grand theft auto 5 and and get through that and i will be live streaming a majority of it i probably won't be live streaming all of it because i do play my games outside of live streams to make progress <laughs> surprise surprise <laughs> but i will probably be live streaming a majority of it so if you want to go check that out again there's a link to my twitch down in the description below it's twitch.tv slash um snickle so i want to go through a few comments here if you guys have any comments discussion topics anything like that that you uh want me to discuss in upcoming trophy talks you can leave them in the comments below of this video and i will go through them so there's not a lot that i want to talk about but i do have a comment from pj dugan here who says he's currently working on max pain 3 with one trophy left getting to level 50 grinding it out while listening to this is good wait am i dumb grind <laughs> I might be grinding, uh, getting to level 50, grinding it out while listening to this. Good luck on your playthrough. Great game. And then he edited it. Uh, it doesn't tell me, tell me when, but he said that he got the platinum. So congrats, PJ, on getting that platinum. I am going to be doing the same, except I will probably be grinding it out on stream, which may be a little more, you know, interesting. Not really sure. So, and then... Uh, Another uh, comment here from Gaming Boy 79 basically talking about the uh, Max Payne 3 multiplayer and stuff. He's uh, Gaming Boy 79 is the is someone that we've been playing Max Payne 3 with. He's been playing with us to get through stuff. And uh, we are also doing the uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, heist stuff when it comes around on the PS3. If you guys are interested in doing the Grand Theft Auto 5 heist stuff on the PS3 again, I mentioned this in the last trophy talk. Please join the Discord in the link in the description below. And then you can either message me on Discord through the server, or you can add me as a friend through Discord through the server. So yeah, either one of the two works, but please uh, contact me through Discord. Discord or Twitter, not really through PSN. PSN messages, uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of, and I think I even have them turned off just because... I don't ever check my PSN messages. I really, I, I just don't. Um, but for when it comes to the grinding in, in Max Payne 3, it's going to be what it's going to be, but uh, we will figure it out when I get around to it. I'm not too worried. Um, so it is what it is. And then another comment from S79 saying, you are the one one of the best people I follow on YouTube. Well, thank you very much. I, I do really appreciate it. I love everybody that comes around, watches, likes the videos, all that stuff. I really do appreciate you all more than you could imagine, honestly. 
So there's the comments. Again, if you guys have any topics or anything that you want me to discuss, I don't really have any topics necessarily to discuss this week, but if there's any topics in particular that you want me to discuss specifically, I would stay gaming related and or trophy related. You can leave them in the, in the comments below and I will cover them. And if you ever want to ask me anything live in person, uh, again, you can always stop by the, the Twitch streams, the good old Twitch streams, and I can answer questions live over there. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Again, let me know down in the comments below what games you guys have been playing. If you've got any topics, questions, anything like that, you can leave that stuff all down in the comments below. Down in the description below, you'll find links to all types of stuff. My Twitter, my Twitch, Discord, podcast, other videos, channel, things like that. So if you want to go follow me or do any of that stuff or listen to that stuff or support this or support that, I would greatly appreciate it again more than you can imagine. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like. If you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing for more trophy content like this. And I hope to see you guys all around sometime soon.